Whenever, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. How, oh, could I ask this? Sure. Uh, this, don't, okay. don't go real. Okay. Cool. You're ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Margaret, when we talked before the opening of The Color Purple, I guess neither one of us had any idea that we'd be sitting here in Fort Worth, Texas, having a chat no. this soon again, but how nice. And first of all, let me offer congratulations for your Oscar nomination. Thank you. Is that just... Oh, it's just... <laughs> uh, it, it's such an honor because uh, this this year, if you look at all the wonderful films that were out, and in uh, the supporting actress category it was such a toughie. So to be nominated as one of the five people that should be recognized. Uh, and, and to be voted upon by your peers for this recognition is, is truly an honor. And it took 14 years for it to happen for me, and it, I'm just blessed, uh, and I, I feel that uh, I'm glad it didn't take any longer. <laughs> <laughs> Worth waiting for. Yeah. Of course, Oprah Winfrey is also nominated in that category in Supporting Actress, and then Whoopi in Best Actress. Yes. But I, I'm wondering, um, since Oprah and you both are nominated for the same category, do you feel that that hurts your chances for both of you to, or either of you to win? Well, I think first of all, under in the, if it were, wasn't for the fact that Color Purple is such a special project, uh, I would probably feel a lot of competition. Um, but the honor, I mean, do you realize the progress that it's been made with Whoopi and myself and with Oprah? Uh, that's such a tremendous thing. Uh, so. I wish all of us, I mean, to answer your question, I wish Desirita Jackson, the young Seeley, as well as, as uh, Kuso Busia, Nettie, could be recognized in the same way also, because when you look at the film, you cannot imagine anyone else playing those characters, and everyone gave so much. So, no, I don't, it's hard for me to think uh, in the other sense of, uh, about it. You know, because we're all such winners. I'm such a winner now, I feel. So whether, whether you get the Oscar or whether opera, uh, Oprah, Oprah gets uh, an Oscar doesn't. No, we're, I, we're all going to be there cheering for each other. Just the, the film, Color Purple, makes such a statement. Uh, and so many, many wonderful messages are in the film. Uh, Alice Walker's spirit is going to prevail. Everybody. Oscars notwithstanding. <laughs> okay. You, uh, of course, um, gained, uh, I think you told me before, 20 pounds, and then you, now you've lost that? Yes. I, oh. I, am, I didn't want to be any more embarrassed. Than I, you, you see, Stephen asked me to gain 10 pounds. That was all, 10 pounds. And uh, in order to do this properly so that it wouldn't just go the normal places that excess weight goes to uh, on women. Uh, I chose to work out with a bodybuilder. And in the paranoia of thinking I wouldn't gain the weight, I gained 25. <laughs> so I've kept five pounds because I was rather gaunt when starting. Uh, and, and I have lost the, the 20 pounds. Was so, it difficult? Uh, not too much, no. It's the firming up that's difficult, you know, to get all the <laughs> getting the skin from talking back at you, you know, when you when you walk, you know, you know. Once you get my age, uh, it's it's a little harder, yes. And uh, but fortunately for me, I did not number one have the weight on that long, only like four months, four or five months at the most. And the other thing being that. I have always been into exercising every day anyway, so, uh, and I'm not an eater, so I have all those things. The, the hardest part in gaining the weight was to have to eat all the time. I had to overeat, overeat, so um, I'm glad I'm me again. What did you make of Stephen not getting nominated? Do you see this? 
<laughs> we, we all, we all just, uh, what can I tell you? I, I can't speak for the Academy. Directors vote for directors, actors vote for actors. Uh, I can only say that Margaret Avery, I know I would not have gotten an, a nomination for Best Supporting Actress had it not been for Stephen. So my nomination is as much his as mine. And I think we all feel that way. All 11 of us are going to be there the night of the Academy Awards cheering for each other and uh, giving our own special tribute to Steven Spielberg. Have you talked with him since he did not get nominated? No, I understand he's been in, in Hawaii and my prayers go to him hoping that his bravery will continue uh, as it has as it required in making The Color Purple because no one else would touch the project. And I understand his peers uh, said, you're crazy to do such a project. Uh, but he wanted to do it and I thank him for it and I cheer him for it and hope that he continues to do the brilliant work that he has done in the past. Don't you think he rather anticipated a nomination? Surely he did. I would say that anytime you know or you feel in your heart you've, you've done something special. I mean, I can't speak for Stephen. Myself, I mean, I would have loved to have thought uh, I would get a nomination. I mean, I, myself, I think that I was truly, literally a dark horse, <laughs> so I, I feel just wonderful getting the nomination. But, uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for him, but, but don't you think he deserved it? If, if your film gets 11 nominations, you, the director, had to play a strong role in that. You, you say that were it not for Stephen, you probably wouldn't have got a nomination. Now, I'm thinking of this one scene, your, your wonderful line, you sure are ugly. No, you show is ugly. <laughs> Now, what, and then the laugh. Now, is that something you did, Margaret, instinctively, or did Stephen want you to do it that way? Tell me how that evolved. Well, first of all, in the book, Alice Walker, that's the way she writes it. And uh, Margaret Avery knew as, as in developing the character, I wanted the laughter. I, I laugh. My, I, I'm a laugh, laugher, but I wanted to be a special laugh. And this I started working on when I was auditioning, before I auditioned for Suge. I knew that that laughter was, I mean, to me, Suge, when she laughed, it was like, ugh, the sky is a limit. It's, it was no inhibition. She just laughed. And in Alice Walker's book, when she talks about it, people say, you could hear Suge's laughter or, I mean, she talks about this. So I would go around the house practicing and my daughter, my 11-year-old daughter would say, Mom, I, 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 yeah, that's the one, that's the one. You know? So when, by the time we actually filmed it, and Stephen told me himself that when he saw me, my, my camera test, that it was the laugh that caught him, one of the things that caught him. So I knew that when we did that, that, uh, that take. It was going to be that Suge laugh. And uh, we, we did it. It took us many times to get that scene. Uh, we waited for rain. Then when the rain came, we couldn't shoot it because another actor was there from New York and we had to wait for him to do his thing. Then the rain left again. Then we shot it again and it wasn't audible. Then we shot it again and something else. We, it was too shadowy. So finally, we did it, you know. But your line, was that also done many, many times, your line and your laugh, well, the that close-up? The, the line and the laugh were a part of the same. Yes, it was done. Such a special moment in the movie. Uh -huh. Such a special moment. Okay. Um, why did you not do your own singing in the movie? Not enough time. You know, I was the last character to be cast, and um, a, a, a role of this nature, usually you have months, weeks and weeks to prepare. Uh, I just 
marvel at at the leading names such as De Niro and uh, and many many actors Dustin Hoffman who have months to prepare so once Steven said that he wanted a December 18th release it was like this tremendous amount of music but I did attempt it uh, uh, I was shooting all day at Universal Studios when we started first started out and that with makeup and transportation and all you're talking about 15 16 hours a day and trying to get go from there to Quincy studio it, it just impossible so I tried it though and Quincy called me one night and he says Margaret we decided to go with another singer and I begged him I said oh no Q I can do it I can do it he says honey what's gonna suffer the acting or the singing and you know uh, singers know uh, that when you're exhausted your voice is the first thing that goes and probably with dancers your dan your legs are the first to go and I said okay and the next day Oh, a couple of days later I realized it was like a weight off my shoulders because it was enough work to work on Suge as the character and then once Tata Vega who was wonderful as the singing uh, expression of Suge uh, once I heard her it was still work to to get every single breath and nuance of her incorporated with the direction of Stephen and Margaret Avery as a character. So I, I definitely had my, my hands full. And I, but I, I hope that the, the audience enjoyed it. And I feel very complimented when people say, well, when you sang, and I think, oh, I have to tell them, no, it wasn't me. But I do sing uh, a couple of the tunes in, in Margaret Avery's show. Yes, which uh, was here in Fort Worth last night. Yes. And, you know, I hope you will come back and do another concert at some future date, Margaret, because the word of mouth on this is going to be so wonderful. Oh, I hope so. That the next time they'll fill that house twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we can, we can count on that. One last question, and that is uh, uh, th some criticism of Stephen for watering down the book, and particularly the relationship between you and Celie. Now, what would you like people to understand about that? Number one, I, only from my finally working on, the experience of working on a film that's uh, derived from a book, I understand now that it's two different medias. You cannot do a book on camera, there's not enough time. Do you realize we had two and a half hours almost on this film, and an hour and a half of what we actually shot was edited. So that was a lot of work right there. Um, time. You won't get a film distributed nowadays, not easily, if it's over two hours and 20 minutes. The other thing is, we must do entertainment with responsibility. What people are willing to read comfortably in their own private space and what they can see on the screen comfortably are two different things. And myself as a mother of an 11 year old, I was just relieved when I found out that certain things would not be filmed. Um, I wouldn't have as a person been comfortable. I don't think that the it was necessary to explore everything explicitly that was in the book. People got the message and I think it was done with taste and, and I'm real proud. And over <clears throat> excuse me, and overall Margaret, what would you like to say to black people because still some black people are saying that uh, you know the the film demeans blacks. So what what would mm -hmm. you like them to understand? Oh, should we get the, yeah? Let's hold let's it just a second. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll pick up my question again. Margaret, I know you must be aware that there are still some black people who feel uncomfortable with the color purple, feel that it demeans blacks, particularly black men. Now, what would you like them to understand? The film was not a documentary. In order to represent a people, 
It Must Be All Factual, and this was an entertaining piece taken from a fiction book. I do understand why the controversy, and that is because we as black people do not see our Im images often on film. Once we get the experience of having many images and positive, negative, such as our Anglo counterparts, then we will not uh, think of it as representative of us. You, you see, uh, You're the Dragon was also a controversial issue, and I think it was for the same reasons. Uh, because when you see your image so seldom, you expect it to represent you. And a film cannot be entertaining and be burdened with that responsibility. Okay. Margaret, thank you. You've been so generous mm -hmm. with your time. And this was a real interview. I, got, I really <laughs> feel like I got to talk with you finally. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. I just did. Yes. And that's not easy. Well, of course, I do it nearly every day. So uh, it becomes just a part of the, of the job, you know. It's like when you have to lip sync to, you know, the music. It's mm -hmm. part of the job. And that's not, that's difficult, too. It really is. Uh, to make the lip come precisely, oh, that sure, looping, in sure. other words. Oh, yeah, yes. looping is because not I'll easy. I'll tell you something between you and I. Um, when we were to shoot the first lip sync uh, uh, challenge for me, which was the Dirty Dozen, when the jute joint opens up on the Dirty Dozen, I was so off, and I couldn't, re couldn't understand. I was panicked, you know. And, and I, I, was re I realized that my adrenaline was going, and I thought, well, maybe that's it. Maybe I'm nervous. But I knew, I knew that song, breath perfect, not let it perfect, <laughs> breath perfect, nuance perfect. And then it got to me. Uh, it occurred to me, you see, just before the take, you could hear what was happening in the studio. And they would count, one, two, three. Well. The take that I had been rehearsing to so diligently, and I must have played it a hundred times or more, the count off was a little different. They said one and a two or something like that. So it was from that that I realized they were giving, <laughs> playing me the wrong take, the studio take. Oh. So I said, hey, that's not the one. I was so happy <laughs> that it wasn't me that was on. So once they played the correct take, yeah. then I was like, right on, sure. right on, you know, it's after the fact, man. Mm -hmm. so, but the people who were there were most receptive, and if, if I could have, hopefully my, uh, my statement on drugs, if, if, if one person got the message, or if one person gets the message throughout this entire tour, if I can help them to look at the situation then it's all worthwhile, because it's a real problem. Mm. Yeah. So say your line so I can laugh. <laughs> you show <sure> is ugly! <laughs> <laughs> something serious and um, I'm very intense. Um, we talked about the nomination mm -hmm. and I'm real happy about that. Very pleased and blessed. Um, we talked about the values of how Spielberg, what they chose to, to, to be in the film. Mm -hmm. And I think I gave you an intelligent answer. <laughs> And um, then we talked about, uh, gee, your memory's probably much better than mine. But you look How's so that, Linda? Oh. What was your first reaction when you heard you were nominated? Let's do it one more time. Okay. Do you have a little okay. okay. One more time. Talk to me. What was your first reaction when you heard you were nominated? 
The fact that both you and Oprah Winfrey are nominated for the color purple, is that going to hurt your chances, both of you, or either of you, to win? Since both you and Oprah Winfrey are nominated in the supporting actress category for the color purple, is that going to hurt your chances for winning? What do you make of the fact that Steven Spielberg was not nominated? How do you account for the fact that Steven Spielberg was not nominated? Don't you think Steven anticipated a nomination? Have you talked with Steven Spielberg since the nominations? Was it Steven that wanted? Why did you gain so much weight for the role of Suge? Was it difficult to lose? Your one big line that's so outstanding in it. Now, how did that work out? How did you arrive at the interpretation of that wonderful line and the laugh? Um, what would you say to black what would you say to blacks who object to the color purple be, as a come in the other door some blacks are still objecting to the color purple saying that it demeans blacks particularly black men what would you like black people to understand about that The scene, some people are criticizing Steven Spielberg because the scene between you and Seeley has been watered down. Some people are criticizing Steven Spielberg because he changed somewhat the relationship between you and Seeley from how it's depicted in the book. Why did you not do your own singing in the movie? Come in. Come in. Let's just do some single reactions now. <laughs> okay, it's got to do it.